Use your crossbows, keep her on the ground. Good idea. Did you say her? It's a female, yeah. Here that, lads. We've alerted Witcher here. Hundred spans out, and he spotted what the lizard's got between its legs. <laughs> right now, lads. You've heard a specialist. Ready your crossbows. All good and fine, but the monster's not in its nest. Gotta track it down first. Not at all necessary, Geralt. We looked into it. Gave it a think. Traders use tannin to lure the beast. Who says we can't do the same? You got any tannin? Came into a bit, aye. Yeah, willing to do the honours. Welcome back to another Witcher lore video. I've decided to make today's video on the Reaver Hunters, also known as the Crinfrid Reavers. So as always, I'll begin today's video on some basic information about this guild, then I'll move on to their history, and then I'll move on to listing individual members, and I'll also talk about their appearance. So to begin with, the basic information. The Crinfrid Reavers were a group of mercenaries from the city of Crinfrid, who were known to be specialists in hunting and fighting draconids and dragons. So as you'll know if you've read the books, or possibly even played the games, the Reaver Hunters are probably the most famous group for fighting dragons specifically, as that's their entire guild, that's the entire point of their guild, to hunt down dragons, slash draconids. So they're very, very famous. So these hunters were active during the second half of the 13th century, so that's how long they were active for. They kind of petered out after that, I suppose. There were actually only three of them to begin with, and this was Boholt, which was their leader, Kennet and Gar. But more joined their group as their reputation grew. But I'm going to get into that later in the video and I'll get into that in their history. So now for their history. So their origins aren't explained in the books or the games, but we can probably assume that they were most likely a group of skilled mercenaries who banded together to pursue greater beasts, such as the dragons slash draconids. That's obviously just one sort of possibility of how they could have come about. They might have all just been a group of friends, considering how similar they all look, and then they grouped together and blah blah blah. But we can assume they were probably just skilled mercenaries who banded together and then they made the reavers and changed their look depending on their guild. So the first time you as the reader meet them is in the short story known as The Bounds of Reason. And this story tells of how Yarp and Zigrin, his crew, Ike of Donnell, I'm not sure if I'm saying Ike right, Geralt of Rivia, Yennefer of Vengerberg, Boholt, and the Reaver Hunters hunted down a golden dragon. Well, in fact, the main reason was because of another dragon who was in fact only a green dragon and the golden dragon's mate, but it became kind of a hunt for the golden dragon. A lot of them had different reasons for why they were going to go there, so I won't go into the full story as I'd love to cover it in a Witcher Tales video, as this tale is very, very interesting and I think it'd be a cool one. You know, the story of the golden dragon would be a good Witcher tale. But what I will say is that each hunter had their own reasons for pursuing the dragon and the Reaver Hunters did in fact attempt to rape Yennefer in this story. And the only reason I mention that is because that gives you an idea of their character. I'd say they're not exactly very honourable. So, soon after the hunt for the Golden Dragon, their leader Boholt took a spill and hit his head on a rock. This caused him to not only lose his memory, but also to lose his taste in women. He kind of lost his personality by hitting his head that hard, but it's said that he was still a beast in battle. So the best example I can probably give you is that Geralt, after he lost his memory, he still remembered how to fight, he just didn't know anything about who he was. So it's kind of similar, but I guess that Boholt got brain damage and Geralt just had sort of a spell put on him. So after this, the two remaining Reaver Hunters, Kennet and Gar, still did respect their leader, but decided that they should take on a new apprentice, just because their leader wasn't exactly reliable and they Need to make sure they have at least three river hunters or they might not be able to take contracts on just the two of them. So this caused them to take on a new apprentice known as New Boy. And in The Witcher 2 you can actually meet Kennet, Gar and New Boy at Foltest Camp. Boholt isn't there and I can imagine it's because he wouldn't exactly be the best guy to have in a war as he's not completely sound of mind. So as I said, after recruiting New Boy, the three remaining river hunters decided to enlist in Foltest's army. And this was just a way to make ends meet. There probably wasn't much work for them in it considering that everybody was too scared of the war to deal with dragons and stuff like that. So they probably just joined the war as a way to make ends meet. But, after the Temerian army disbanded, which was after Nilfgaard invaded and completely took over Temeria, effectively, they continued with their dragon hunting, but this time they took on some new members, such as Jamor and Ori. They actually took on a few more members after that, but I'm not going to get fully into all that, as it's not exactly stated, but we can imagine they probably had quite a few different Reaver Hunters they got into their group. So they sent Jamor and Ori, along with a few unnamed Reaver Hunters, to Tucson, and this was to find a Silver Basilisk, or they perhaps just sent them to Tucson and they found the contract while they were there. And it most likely they probably sent a few more groups of Reaver Hunters out into the world as their reputation grew and grew from that. So the Crinfred Reaver Hunters became legends. And 
Romans managed to wipe out every single Draco Lizard and Forktail in Redania. Along with that, they also killed three red dragons and one black dragon. Finally, to end today's video, I'm going to list all the Crinfrid Reavers, and then discuss their appearance. So, there is Boholt, Kennet, Gar, Newboy, Jamor, and Ori and other unnamed hunters which you can meet in The Witcher 3. What I will say now is I did actually plan to cover each of the characters in this guild, but decided that I'd actually like to save those guys for character videos, as they're all pretty interesting. I think I could group a couple of them together. I think Bolholt could have his own character video, possibly. Kenneth and Gar could probably be grouped together with New Boy, and Jamor and Ori could be grouped together with the other Reaver Hunters, and we could tell the story of the Silver Basilisk. So when you look at the Reaver Hunters, you'll think, well, they all look kind of similar, and it's kind of funny because their appearance isn't exactly explained in the books of the games, but like any organisation, us as the reader and I guess you could say the viewer in the games can imagine that they most likely adopted their look to stand out as reaver hunters. For example, all witchers have cat eyes, that's obviously a genetic thing, but you see the cat eyes you think, ah, witcher. You see the bald guys with kind of tattoos on, ah, you think reaver. And that I imagine is a group identity thing, so not only will they be able to get more work from it, because for example, say if they're visiting a town one time, as reaver hunters people might think, oh we have a draco lizard problem or a dragon problem or whatever, let's ask these guys because they're reaver hunters and i imagine that was the idea behind it it basically gives them more of an identity so the reaver hunters are generally either bald or have very short hair they also go into battle shirtless but not completely without anything on them as they are covered in tattoos so i've actually looked at all the tattoos of each reaver hunter and from my personal opinion, I believe that it probably acts as some type of war paint, as if you look at the tattoos, they don't seem to follow any particular pattern, you know, for example, each Reaver Hunter has different tattoos, hence why they probably have different war paint styles. It's not to do with the guild, but I think it's just almost like, if you're a Reaver Hunter, you have to have tattoos and war paint, but you get to choose your own. So as I said, this video wasn't going to be a particularly long one, as the Reaver Hunters aren't a massive guild within The Witcher. They are, but they're not explained entirely. But that's all I'm going to say for today's video. I hope you all enjoyed, sorry if it's a little short. I try and do these videos every other day so sometimes they might be a little bit short and I would do longer ones but there isn't a lot of information but my idea behind this channel is I want to cover everything in The Witcher right everything and that even means having little short videos like these sometimes but anyway I hope you've enjoyed today's video as I always say and I feel like I really want to reiterate this to you guys if you follow me on Twitter and you like my videos and you're like I love The Witcher lore and stuff then my videos go on there automatically so say if you're more active on Twitter say if you set up notifications so you have it on Twitter then you'll know when my videos come out every single day which means you'll be able to watch them first and you'll be able to watch them more easily I suppose. I also did a poll on there the other day and this is stuff I want to do which is where I get your opinions on things. So for example I did a test poll which was where I asked if you liked Roach or Eorveth. We had about 30 people take part in that and it was really interesting. Eorveth won by a bit, not by much though surprisingly and people put like replies saying what they liked and what they didn't like about each character so that was really really fun. Also be sure to follow my Twitch. This weekend I'm going to say it now actually for you guys. I plan to stream Gwent because I really really want to do the premium keg weekend. I'd like to show you off the new update and things too and it could be really fun and we have awesome chats there so be sure to join. You don't necessarily have to talk in chat, you could just sit and watch. Also be sure to join the Discord, there's fellow like-minded witches on there. And as always, a big, big, big thank you to the Patreon pledges. I had a few new Patreons recently, I've had stuff change on there, people have been upping their donations and things, which honestly is so amazing. The fact that you guys support me in this way is awesome. If at some point in the future, I'm a bit worried because I'm going to try and get advertisements on my videos but I'm scared that a lot of them will probably be copyright strike just because of the fact that they're Witcher lore videos. I don't know. Apparently that, that can happen a lot with YouTube. I might get demonetized for having explicit content such as people being beheaded and things like that, which isn't really my fault. That's just the nature of the game. So the donations on Patreon, if that ever gets to a point in which I could live off it, that would honestly be amazing and it'd mean that I can do this comfortably and without any stress. So thank you all so much for donating. You don't know how much it means to me. Every time I get a new donator, every time I get a new anything, it is honestly like wow. And what I will say is if I get enough donations and it gets crazy, I might have to up the rewards a bit because I feel like not only do I owe you guys a bit if you're donating so much, that if I'm self-sufficient on it and if YouTube does make me any money, then I can give back to you guys as best I can. And if you want to donate to me on Patreon, be sure to check down the description. It's just a dollar to get your name at the end of every single video. I may change that in the future depending on how many Patreons I get as it could just be crazy like the entire video might end up being credits. So we'll see. But thank you guys so, so much. Thank you to everybody who donates a dollar, donates any amount of money. You know, somebody donates 99 dollars, thirty dollars, sixteen dollars. It's just, it's this unbelievable array of donations and stuff. So thank you all so much. Anyway, I'll see you all later guys. Have an awesome rest of the week.